Before launching a new product on Amazon, first you need to understand what your customers want and analyze your competitors to create a product listing that stands out. In this video, you will discover strategies for understanding customer needs, best practices for testing main images against competitors and auditing competitor listings, as well as validating your brand's visual identity before their launch. You will see how to use PICFU tool to do all this and in case you want to try PicFu for yourself, find the link in the video description. Hello, Justin. I'm really excited to have you on Orange Click YouTube channel today to talk about A-B testing, uh, which is something Amazon sellers are more into than ever before. And it's super important to gather important customer uh, behavior insights. Uh, but before uh, we go into the details and also discover some of the cool features of PICFO, uh, could you first introduce yourself and uh, let us know what's your background and what you're doing in Amazon space? Sure. So my name is Justin Chen, um, and I'm one of the co-founders of PICFO. Um, we actually built PicFu years ago, not for e-commerce, but uh, we were building a different business and we needed to get feedback on a redesign. And so my co-founder, John, and I built PicFu and um, made it as the easiest way to gather consumer research uh, on the web right now. So it's particularly useful for people selling in e-commerce, especially on Amazon, as it's a very competitive marketplace. And it's really important to gather your consumer insights early in the process. True. So yeah, oftentimes we hear sellers talking about A-B testing when they're already selling the products and have been maybe selling for years. But yeah. what's actually something that sellers should do uh, is testing their ideas already before launching products, right? Exactly. Yeah. So so yeah, that's why we also want to educate our audience about the, the importance of uh, just uh, gathering more data, not just relying on your gut feeling or inner feeling, which can, I think, oftentimes lie a little bit. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Get out of your own head, right? Get out of your team's head. Exactly. And 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 be inside of the shoes of your customers, as they say. So um, how we will do it today, Justin, you have prepared a slide deck for us as well to go a little bit more into the details of A-B testing and also Pickful. And then we're going to also discover um, some cool features Pickful offers for Amazon sellers. And yeah, I, I think we're ready to, to learn from you. Yeah, so I, I wanted to particularly focus on doing competitive testing uh, with consumer insights and trying to improve performance by looking at the competition because most of us are selling into a marketplace like Amazon where uh, it's highly competitive. You're not really just selling um, you know, in a bubble, right? So it's important to look at everyone else you're selling against. So really quickly, again, about PicFu, uh, we're a self-service platform that lets you get feedback from consumers about anything. And uh, we can tap into over 15 million global respondents across seven different countries now. And I'll touch on this more at the end of the, the talk, but we're able to touch uh, U.S. respondents, Canadian, United Kingdom, Australia, Germany, and now Mexico and Japan as well. So that's really exciting uh, if you're selling into any of those marketplaces. We have all kinds of ways to target your audience. So it could be things like gender, age. Uh, even behavioral things like, do you have a dog? Do you take nutritional supplements? Do you exercise? Um, and most of these polls take 30 minutes or less to finish, which is super, super fast and easy for you to iterate within the same day with your designer. Um, and they start at a dollar per response. So 15 responses, 15 bucks. And our focus is always providing the best human centric feedback, but we do build some AI tools into the platform to help with that analysis. So we serve thousands of different Amazon sellers, um, all small to small to large. So some of the, the largest aggregators out there, large CPG companies, top Amazon sellers, which a lot of times are small teams, you know, and individuals that are just doing really, really well. Um, and entrepreneurs all across different industries. So uh, even software companies like DuckDuckGo, the privacy search engine, um, all kinds of mobile gaming companies um, all across the board. But here today, we're going to be talking about e-commerce. So if you only take away two things from this talk, um, just remember that you can test everything and that you should test before you invest, like, like uh, we were talking about earlier, Lisette. So let's talk about how to launch into um, a new category with a new product. Um, so I've got a scenario that we're going to follow along throughout the presentation. Um, and basically, we're going to pretend that we're selling dog, dog hair clippers. And this is a snapshot of the uh, state of the competition that we're going to be going against. So here are some things, some areas that we want to gather feedback on. So we want to understand what problems 
our shoppers are facing, what some of the features that they desire. Um, but we also want to look at the competition. We want to understand what the uh, best practices of the main images are. We want to understand what our competition is doing well um, or not well with our listing. And then we also want to make sure that our branding um, is on point and resonating with our audience. So, you know, making sure that our logo looks good and resonates, and then we want to validate that against our, our market. So if you could gather your target audience in a room, what would you ask them? And you would probably start by asking them a lot of open-ended questions about their problems. You know, for example, imagine you're grooming your dog. And so that we asked 15 US-based dog owners who are prime subscribers, imagine you're grooming your dog. What are some of the biggest problems you face with existing grooming equipment? So this is a nice way to just start understanding the problem space that you're gonna be tackling. Uh, maybe there are things that you could take away for your product design or the thing that you're gonna source or maybe even just some of the selling points that you're gonna emphasize. And again, another question you might ask is um, trying to understand what the features they're looking for and what some of the buying factors are. So here's a question again to dog owners. Imagine you're shopping for dog hair clippers, what product features are most important to you? And so these are the things that they're gonna be thinking about as they're deciding which one to click on in the Amazon search results. And then as they're reading through listings, you know, these are the things that are gonna to be top of their mind. So you'll see some of the responses uh, indicated durability and ease of use, um, the material they wanna make sure that it's high quality uh, and the different size and weights of the clippers. So these are all things that you wanna keep in mind as you're designing your product. And also as you're uh, figuring out what to emphasize uh, as a selling point. The other thing we wanna understand is just getting that click. So what are some of the image best practices that, that we're seeing uh, across the top competitors? Um, and so it's really important to do these kinds of tests and read through the comments because every, every one of our respondents will give you written responses to understand what the motivation is for clicking, for example, option D. Um, and when I read through the responses, a lot of them were noting about the variety of accessories that were shown and it really had a really nice professional appearance. I think that, you know, the layout was very clean. Um, and so all of these kind of factors uh, led to option D being the most popular one. So the other thing you can do is have people just go visit a listing. So uh, we call these kind of like crowdsourced listing audits where you could ask these 15 dog owners to go check out a listing. And this could be your listing. This could be a competitor's listing, but trying to understand what the listing is doing, uh, where it might be deficient. So maybe there are questions that are not being answered or being emphasized well enough on the listing. And those are things that either you should, you should show up on your own listing and maybe opportunities for you to um, differentiate from your competitors. So for example, um, this respondent asks, how long does it take to charge? Maybe that's not something that was emphasized enough in the uh, description, or maybe it needed a secondary image. Uh, that could, you know, infographic that emphasize the the charging times. Um, in this case, it looks like the, this one is also discounted so much, which could also raise flags. So, you know, a lot of interesting things uh, as going through people's heads as they look at listings. And this is a nice way to capture it. And logos. So in this example, we had our designer give us a number of uh, logos and brand names to test out as we're developing our own uh, brand identity. And you could see this groom smart one with the dog was the one that won. But it's not important, uh, it's not enough to just win our own uh, test, but we need to win against a competition. So in this case, we also wanna validate it against other brands. And you'll notice that GoAd was uh, one of the other brands that was the, uh, the top competitor that was winning the clicks. And so you can see by purely branding alone, our uh, hypothetical GroomSmart brand does do quite well against the actual top selling brand. So we ran a number of tests here, um, trying to understand what problems people are having, how they want to buy their product, what images are doing well. And all of these uh, only took two hours, took six polls. We got over 125 different respondents and 200 bucks. And it's a lot more information that is going to better inform our product decisions and just give us a lot more confidence going into this space. And so we'll go a little bit deeper into that in the next section, but the first thing I want to touch on actually is, um, you know, a while back we were talking to one of our customers who's a, a top 20 Amazon seller. And one of the tactics that he uses 
is actually this uh, Photoshop approach where he would take search results and um, kind of adjust the review counts and the prices and kind of, you know, locking down things that he couldn't really control. And he does this before spending a single dime on the product. So he wants to make sure that his hypothetical product, so the product design that he thinks he would come to market with, the branding, the packaging, even the main image, go, going so far as to design all of that, and then to test it in this hypothetical uh, form to see, am I going to make a dent in the competition? You know, maybe at a lower review count, maybe at a certain price, because if he's not going to do uh, do well enough, then it's not worthwhile. Even though the keyword volume may be interesting, if his product that he's going to come to come to market with is not good enough, um, he's not going to invest in it. And so this is how we see a lot of our top sellers doing this, not on the marketing side, you know, they not after they've invested thousands of dollars and then they're trying to improve their sales, but before even doing that investment so that, you know, you spend a few hundred bucks up front, you know that you could spend thousands of dollars confidently in a certain product direction, uh, knowing that it's going to do well. So that tactic was so popular. And as we talked to other customers trying to teach them to use it, you know, they weren't as familiar with Photoshop or, or even Canva. So we built this mock-up generator um, at tools slash mockups. And uh, basically you can put in ASINs or search terms and we'll pull um, some default information, but you can go into each one of those and change out the image. Maybe it's yours. Maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe you're going into a space that's new and you just want to take an existing listing and kind of change out the image to what you might go and do and maybe put the title, adjust the ratings and the price. And what you can do is then we'll create a snapshot that you can build a survey with. And so it's a really interesting way to do hypothetical testing, um, you know, like, hey, what if I drop my price, you know, $2 and uh, my reviews were, you know, a thousand less than all my competition. So that's an interesting way to test it. And I've got a few more examples later. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's continue on with the kind of the most popular thing, which is main image optimization. And so this was the main image of the competitor that won. Um, and one of the best selling ones of dog hair clippers. And so we're going to work backwards to try to get ahead of this, uh, competitor. So what are the things that we can improve here? Um, there's a dog, there's different colors, there's packaging, there's the logo. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to iterate on different design variations, and then we're going to validate it against the competition. So we're going to play with just changing the dog. And uh, I think that their dog was option A's. And so you'll see that the... The audience likes this uh, light brown colored dog. A lot of other interesting dogs, all very cute, but the results are pretty skewed for uh, option B. So that's that's the dog we're going to choose. Um, packaging design. So we we mocked up a bunch of different packaging design for the dog hair clippers. Um, all pretty appealing, uh, in my opinion, but clearly option B. Uh, was the winner here. So that's the packaging design we're going to go with. So we're iterating on our own packaging here. Um, and then if we put it all together with that dog and our own packaging, where you'll note that we put our logo on, you know, very similarly designed uh, clippers. We even have the clippers in a different color because we, we had a separate poll where we iterated on the color of the clippers. And now you'll see that, hey, if we came to market with this particular combination of branding, you see the Groom Smart uh, logo looks a lot better than the GoAd. Uh, this packaging, this dog, these color clippers, it's going to perform quite well uh, against even this top uh, competitor. So, um, you know, really interesting iterative approach. And if we dig into some of the uh, AI sentiment, you'll notice that, uh, let's see, you know, people did call out that GoAd brand name was seen as less appealing. Um, they did like the brown color. They did like the dog that we had. So, uh, you'll see that a lot of the decisions that we iterated on with the earlier polls was, uh, were coming to, uh, effect here. Cool. So I'm going to hop into, uh, change gears a little bit. I'm going to talk about a case study with a customer we had. Um, so we have a customer, uh, called leap stores, which is an Amazon agency. And they had a client that was selling a, a product that, 
had two failed launches. It just wasn't ranking for any of the keywords that they were going for. So what they decided to do, which was similar to the process we just did, was try to start by looking at all the top competitive images. Um, so they took a, what they actually did uh, for their process was they took a screenshot of all the top images. They did a click test on our platform, in which case uh, people are asked to click on the things that uh, you know might draw their attention. And now this agency kind of focused on, all right, well, if all these people like these types of images, I'm going to take the best practices from all those images. I'm going to try to iterate with my own product, uh, changing the image layout to see if I can make improvements. And so this client did, uh, this agency did 13 different polls. Sometimes it didn't work. It doesn't always work. You know, it may not work for your particular, your product, but he tried 13 different approaches to uh, incorporating the best practices from the top competitors. And in the end, he found an image and validated, revalidated it against his top six competitors. And now it won 70 to 30. So a lot more confident. Uh, didn't change anything about the product, only iterating on the main image based off different competitive uh, insights. Was able to relaunch and immediately started uh, within uh, five days, was able to start ranking for all the top keywords that they were going for. So here's the quote uh, from Leap Stores. Uh, you know, the polls only cost $500 uh, to iterate on those 13 polls. And five days after relaunching, they were able to rank on the first page for most of the keywords, which is pretty awesome for not having to change anything about the product, but but just the main image. Uh, so the last topic, which I, I wanted to touch on is pricing, because I think this is a like a under talked about topic. Um, so I think pricing, pricing is interesting because I think um, most people think of pricing in a vacuum and they just, you know, they, they maybe they look at the competition and they'll, they'll, you know, price it to be competitive, but when you're trying to get that click on the uh, search results, your your product is kind of like the entire thing. It's the main image, it's the title, it's obviously the product and the branding, it's the pricing, it's the reviews, it's all these things. So it's you can't just say like, oh, because everyone else is at this price, I need to be at this price, or because I need this price, I'm gonna set it at this price. And there's a lot of experimentation you can do. And obviously humans are susceptible to all these different factors of information. Um, and as we'll see in a case study later, a higher click-through rate on your main image and a stronger main image could actually support a higher price. Um, but one of the first things that I think people should be testing out is definitely pricing combinations. Um, here's an example where they're testing out different combinations of uh, really product variations, right? Um, different designs, different numbers of uh, quantity and, and different prices. So, you know, without even starting with the competitive stuff, just seeing what's gonna resonate with your audience in terms of what combinations of things people want. Using our mock-up generator, you can now also do competitive testing with the pricing. So in this case, uh, we were pretending to be the highware over here, which only had 10 ratings going against a couple competitors that had, let's say hypothetically 2000 ratings, trying to figure out what price we could come in at that might uh, dent the competition. And in these scenarios where you're testing against competition, you don't always have to win, right? Because like, you're not, you know, the, it's not a zero sum game. You don't have to win <laughs> all the sales on Amazon. You just have to take enough of them, right? So maybe this is enough for us. Maybe we want to keep adjusting the price until like we, we take a little bit more click share. But uh, I just want to point that out that when you're testing against your competition, you don't always have to win. You just want to show relative improvement, in which case, we always say to baseline at first, make your improvements and then test again. And if before maybe we only had, uh, you know, a score of, you know, 10 or something, and now we're 14, like that's already showing an improvement. And if we can keep it showing improvement, then that we're heading in the right direction. So here's a case study around pricing, actually. Um, we had a customer that's a earphone manufacturer and uh, their main image was uh, they were they were losing against a competitor, and so they wanted to iterate kind of in a similar fashion to the Leap Stores one, uh, based off some of the best practices. So the first thing he did off the bat actually was just enlarge the main image because he saw that his c competition had a more zoomed in image, and that immediately netted positive results. But he didn't want to stop there; he wanted to continue. Um, he saw that other people were having the accessories laid out there you know, laying it out in a nice way that was very organized. And 
the final test where he incorporated all these things against the, and then he tested against the top seven selling earphones and he won 60% of the time. So now he was able to relaunch, not only getting more sales, but actually increasing the price. So now he's selling at a conversion rate that's 15% higher than their, their best product ever did and 10 euros higher in price. Um, it went so well that he repeated the same process, this iterative process of incorporating competitive feedback with their older model of earphones and was also able to raise the price of that one by two, two euros and increase the conversion rate by 5%. So I think it's just really interesting that you can take a product that's exactly the same and just iterate uh, because like I said, humans are susceptible to a lot of different factors when they're buying and, and clicking. And so if you can just get them to draw their attention, convey your information much more clearly, much more quickly, you could actually uh, not only improve sales in quantity, but also in your uh, dollar amount. Uh, so here's just a quote from him where he also uses PicFu earlier in the process. Uh, they actually use it to, now they use it before production because you know you're you're spending thousands thousands of dollars you're taking months you know each product launch is going to take you you know the better part of a year so why invest all that time and money into a product that may not even sell yeah so that's kind of what i had um i hope i demonstrated that you can test all different aspects you should test before you invest um and kind of like the the uh opportunities are limitless uh, to your imagination sounds really good and I, I don't know, like listening to you, watching these case studies and, and following along, I'm just having the question, why not all of the sellers are not yet testing? <laughs> <laughs> like why they are not doing it? And and maybe you have a good answer to that because like over the years, mostly you have been talking with a lot of sellers uh, yeah. who are not yet, you know, testing and doing all of this because I think the main point, as you said, essentially oftentimes you even don't want you don't need to invest into changing the product itself it's just yeah. about tweaking those small elements which you can easily do if you're like yeah. an e-commerce e seller right uh so what yeah. do you think why sellers are kind of like postponing uh, getting into testing <laughs> well I, I think it depends on on the size i think a lot of sellers that might just be individuals i mean there are so many things that they're dealing with and there's there's more uh, in their minds, pressing things to deal with maybe logistics or, you know, PPC or anything like that. And so I think a lot of times, especially if they're first time tellers, they're, they're coming with a product that they're emotionally tied to. And a lot of people aren't ready to receive feedback on that because a lot of times the feedback is not what they think. Um, and we'll, we'll hear that after a lot of people's first polls and like, oh man, the one that I thought was going to win was not the one that won. But usually once you read through all the responses, you're like, oh, okay, but I can see why now. Now that everyone articulated why, like I can understand why. And so I think most people just don't want to put themselves through that emotional vulnerability. <laughs> but I also think now probably like in, in the past years, like we all know that it's getting tighter in the marketplace. Uh, every, every category is getting more saturated. Competition is yeah. still uh, getting higher. And also the question of uh, profitability is there. And, and you mentioned, you know, testing the pricing and everything. And I think it, there are many sellers probably watching this video and, and thinking, oh, okay, I, I should test a few things out and maybe actually after all i'm able to increase the price you know um exactly. that would be you know uh amazing for those sellers so um yeah definitely very useful tool and very uh useful test sellers can do so do you want to show us uh, a little bit how uh big Pop works and and just uh, the interface of some some of the features yeah you know i think testing is becoming more popular now because amazon is uh you know they they are pushing their own um live testing which actually is very complementary to what we offer, right? Because you don't always want to be live testing every single change that you're doing. And a lot of times what the, the right way to do it would be to iterate and kind of work on your, your design creatives off platform using a platform like PicFu beforehand. Then you could take your top two winners, you could live test it and then uh, allow the, the sales data to, to kind of choose from there. But, you know, a lot of times you're, you want to experiment with creative designs that you don't want everyone to see. And exactly. Exactly. And, and also you don't want to uh, lose the sales if you know ahead, you know, you, 
And also, I think it's limited because I think for the images, you only can A-B test two images at the same time versus in Pikfu, you can yeah. actually, you know, um, have more versions at the same time and get uh, better feedback. Um, and as you said, you can compare your own versions. You can compare yourself with the competitors. Both is very important to do. Um, but yeah, I'm happy that Amazon is also, um, you know, uh, sh giving out those features because now I think sellers are also more educated about the importance of A-B testing and testing overall. And, and again, not just going with their inner gut feeling or what used to be, I think, was that when sellers were, you know, discovering a new product category to go into, they were checking what the top sellers are were doing and thinking, okay, I must do the same way they are doing, right? And that's probably the right way to do when in reality, it's often not the case at all. Okay, so uh, I definitely want to share some some of the new things that we've rolled out recently. So the first thing I'll highlight is our template library. So to your point, you know, a lot of people don't know where to start. And so that's that's part of the reason they haven't been testing. So what we did to, is actually put together a lot of most commonly used uh, use cases. And so you could actually go in here, pickfoo.com slash templates, and we have this template directory. Um, so we could look at just the e-commerce ones and uh, we'll have some of the ones that we just talked through here. So like the Amazon page review, where we ask people to visit a listing. So you could view a live example, um, or you could click on use this template. And the nice part about the templates is that uh, it's a little bit easier um, whole creation experience. So we've already got the question set for you. We've already set it to 50 people. You could change the country. Um, you It's already prime subscribers, but you could add one more targeting trait. And in, in these cases, if you use the template out of the box, it's actually fixed price. So it's $79 for this one. Um, even if you were to adjust, uh, you know, the targeting. Um, so the templates are really nice. And let me show you a couple other ones. Oh, let, me, let me go back to where I was. Uh, so that was the page review one. Um, competitive test is one I want to show you as well. Um, and product idea validation. Yeah, so... So this one is interesting because like I said, we want to start, we want to get you get, gathering feedback early in the process. And so um, people always ask us how early and it could, it could be literally just <laughs> a written blurb of like what you're thinking about doing. And so, you know, we'll have people uh, reach out uh, to our audience and describe what they're thinking about doing. Maybe it'll be a napkin sketch. Maybe it'll just be like, you know, very simple, uh, Canva drawings or whatever it is, just to get early feedback on the concept. And uh, before you've invested too much time, maybe you haven't even found like a proper product designer or anything like that. So uh, really just getting out of your head to make sure that it resonates with your target audience. Um, and then again, super important to test against your competition because you know we're not selling in a vacuum. Uh, so make sure that you do test against uh, you know, competing products, whether this is your main image or maybe these are product designs that you're testing out. Um, so that's the the templates and the template library. Um, I can show you the uh, mock-up tool real quick as well. Um, so if you go to pickfoodcom slash tool slash Amazon mock-up generator, um, here what you can do is you could type in specific ASINs you know, these are some uh, Lego ASINs that we have as an example, but you could also do a keyword in and it'll pull in the top ones. And what you could do from here is you could, you know, choose which ones you think are relevant. Then you can modify any of these. You could change the images, the uh, title, all of this stuff. You could unify it. So you could say, I want them all to be 1999 and 100 reviews and three stars or two and a half stars and it'll change all of them. Um, and if you click import, it'll bring it into the pull builder and then you could ask whatever question that you're trying to test. So um, yeah, this is a nice way to, to do the uh, hypothetical testing of main image changes or pricing changes or you know new product entry into a category, all those things. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show off was actually the, uh, the different, uh, audiences we have. So uh, in this case, here's the our landing page for our, our German consumers. And um, what's really cool is that we auto-translate the question and all the responses. So 
you know, whatever country we're targeting into, if English is not their native language, I mean, you make sure that we're we're gathering feedback from a native, uh, the native language uh, that's there. So in this case, it's another page review, and uh, you'll see that I wrote the question in English, but this is the question that's actually going to be shown uh, to respondents. Um, and then down here, you'll see the actual responses that were given in Japanese. And then, uh, so, you know, in case you do speak Japanese, you can, you can read the actual responses, but then we also show the uh, English translations of them too. So this is really great for product market validation. If you're going into uh, expanding into a new market and you want to make sure that you're product does have a need there or the product in your particular size or variation, like that's a, that's a common issue. You should definitely test out branding, uh, packaging, uh, the selling points that are on your packaging and in your um, marketing material can vary greatly what uh, each cultural culture is looking for. So, you know, particularly if you're going into Germany or Japan, um, you know, it's really important to, to test, uh, to get tests against the local audience. Um, and then I, let me just show you what that looks like in the poll builder. So when you're running a, a poll, um, we always, uh, this is kind of a new feature, but we'll always translate this question into whatever uh, respondents native language is. And so even if you were to write this question in, in Spanish, um, you know, and I'm, you know, targeting Germans, like it'll, it'll translate it. Um, so if I go down here and I say Germany, then it's going to tell me, oh, okay. So since you're targeting a German audience, we've translated your question. This is what it's going to use. So, you know, if that was German and I wanted to edit this, I might say like, okay, you know, I want to change it out or something and I'll rewrite it into German. Um, in which case it does detect that it's German. So we're not going to try to translate it. So whatever you decide to use, uh, we'll make sure that it's translated. Um, so these are all the countries. We're actually beta testing Spain right now as well. Um, and we're always adding more. Um, and then you could do your, your audience targeting as well. And yeah, so that's kind of it. Um, recently we added, um, smaller sample sizes. So, um, you know, probably in our previous video, 50 was the lowest number, but we've since added 15 and 30. And part of the reason for that was that we we saw that people wanted to iterate more quickly on smaller sample sizes. And so um, when you're testing, say, like a small font change or a small design tweak, you don't always feel like you need to invest into 50 different people. So um, a lot of times 15 is good enough and even faster. So if you have, if you do 15 people, it comes back, you know, 10 or 12 people voting for a certain option. That's, you know, statistically good enough for you. Then uh, you don't have to feel like you have to pay for 50 or hundred people to, to do that kind of test. Okay. Sounds good. Well, all of these features are super amazing in my opinion. And, and I encourage all of the viewers to check out uh, uh, exactly what you offer by, by clicking on the link in the video description to head over to the website and really test everything out. And yeah, I think as the main theme of this video is uh, start testing, uh, then you are probably <laughs> not losing money, but winning some uh, additional money or leaving on the table. Uh, so yeah, very cool. Thanks a lot for the overview. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, once more, uh, if you would uh, kind of summarize what's the biggest benefit maybe about testing and using your platform, then then what it would be? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is to to get out of your own head and, and understand uh, the needs of your target audience. Um, so I think a lot of times when we're, whenever we're doing anything, when we're developing something, we're making these, uh, a lot of these decisions and, and we're basing them off of certain assumptions that we might have. And so, you know, it, I know it's really hard, but when you're making those decisions, try to step back and think about, okay, well, if I were to ask my target audience this, you know, what's the question I would ask? And then, you know, come and come to pick food, try to ask that question because it will always be enlightening because it'll, it'll be interesting stories from people's, uh, you know, personal life and, you know, 
especially if you're able to target and we have the audience for you, whether it's dog owners or, you know, uh, nutritional supplement takers, uh, you're going to get really relevant feedback. So uh, yeah, really just get out of your head, validate, and it's going to have a high ROI on, um, you know, whatever your product decision might be. Good thoughts. Well, thanks again, Justin, for taking the time to join me today. Uh, hopefully all of the viewers uh, like this video and, and enjoyed uh, listening to you. And if you did, then definitely like this video as well. And I hope to see you soon again on our channel. Okay, thank you. I hope now you learned about some additional tool which can help you to launch your new products on Amazon more successfully. Try PickFu for yourself. You will find their a link below. They will provide you with polls and get customers insights about your product images, branding and more. And uh, of course, you can get 50% off your first poll. So check the link below in the description. And now I recommend you to watch another video where you will learn how to create an Amazon FBA product packaging that sells.